All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and I'm here again with Brad Schoenfeld, a leading researcher in the entire world on hypertrophy. And Brad has done some really groundbreaking work as it pertains to volume. So how much volume should you train with? You know, do you do 20 sets, 30 sets? And, and how do you split it up? Do you do it all in one session? And Brad has done a lot of research on this. And subsequently, I think a lot of your colleagues like picked up on this and started doing some research as well. But one of the interesting things that I wanted to cover today with the group is, first of all, I wanted to get your general thoughts on volume. And then I wanted to get your general thoughts on how you split it up. Because as a bodybuilder, I honestly had never really thought about splitting up volume and equating it. It was not like, you know, let's say we did on Tuesdays, we did 20 sets for legs. Well, if we wanted to increase our frequency, it would have been just, well, then add another leg workout on Friday and add another 20, 20 sets, sets or 10 for okay. That was our concept. And then a guy like you came along and you said, well, wait a minute, maybe instead of doing 20 sets, you do 10 and then maybe another 10. So you equate a volume. And that concept in bodybuilding is actually pretty new in my opinion, because it was just add mindless volume bef before the research was done. So I'd love to get your perspective because you're, I think you're the leading guy out there on volume and how to manipulate it. Just in general, what are your thoughts? Like what can you uh, educate us on in terms of training volume? Sure. So we carried out, our lab carried out a meta-analysis on this topic. And a meta-analysis, for those who don't know, is when you pool all the data, uh, all the studies, and basically you make one big study out of all the smaller studies that have been carried out. And it gives you a much more powerful way to look at what the body of literature shows. And what we found was really interesting. The, uh, there was a clear, do what's called a dose-response relationship. So as you increase volume, you also increase the amount of growth. But there was a number of caveats to this, a number of limitations. Number one, virtually all of the studies have been carried out in untrained subjects. So there are only two. We had 15 studies that actually looked at this topic. 13 of them were in untrained subjects. And the ability, again, to recover for an untrained subject from volume, higher volumes, is not going to be what, certainly with a high-level bodybuilder, but even someone who is resistance trained, who's been training for a year, two, three, four years. Uh, even on a recreational level where they're used to it. And also, remember, when someone is a newbie, their gains are going to be expedited. You're going to see, when I first started training, I gained like 10 pounds of muscle in four months. You know, you, you gain a lot of muscle quickly because your body is, is adapting very quickly. And then you start to plateau off. I wish I could keep, don't we wish I could keep gaining like when we were a newbie? Pounds. Right. So uh, that was one big limitation. The other one is that there really hadn't been any studies that looked at very high volume. So the most we can equate to was 10 sets per muscle per week. So we looked at basically uh, one, to uh, zero, one to four sets per week, five to nine sets, and then 10 plus. But we couldn't really quantify if you went to 15 or 20 or, or beyond. And we did find this dose response. So uh, the, four, the five to nine had greater hypertrophy than the one to four, and the 10 plus had greater hypertrophy than the four to nine meaning that there is a, an effect of volume here. And it was fairly pronounced, too, where the gains were almost doubled when you went to the higher uh, volume approach. Now, what did the nerdy scientist that I uh, am do about it? Well, we just carried out a study and a uh, scoop for your audience. Don't know whether this will be published. or probably will by the time this video comes out. But we just got it accepted in the uh, journal Medicine, Science, Sports, and Exercise, a really high quality journal. And we looked at the dose-response relationship in resistance-trained men. So we took young, pretty jack guys for the most part, mm -hmm. who have had, had an average of four plus years of resistance training experience. So they, were, they weren't John Meadows types, but they, they were experienced. And we put them through either one set per exercise, three sets, and five sets. So one group did one set, one group did three, one group did five. It was a total body routine. They did three days a week. And we did mostly compound movements. We did uh, chest press, shoulder press, so lat pull down, yeah. uh, seated row, squat, leg press, and uh, leg extension. So it was a total body, seven exercises. And what did we find? Well, in resistance trained men, we found this dose response relationship held true. And even more so, we really pushed the volume here. Where we're the, in the top volume for the arms, it was 30 sets per muscle per week. And in the legs, it was 45 sets. Wow. So it went from, like in the legs, it went from nine sets 
to 27 sets, nine sets in the one set per exercise group because they were doing three exercises three right. times a week, right. to 27 sets to 45 sets. And basically in the legs, we showed the one set group gained, if I remember, around 5% in their quads, mm -hmm. whereas the five set gained 13%. So it was more than double wow. the hypertrophy. Yeah. Now, some things to take away from this and trying to put this all together. Um, it does show that pushing volume is a beneficial strategy, that there is, and that it goes well beyond the, the 10 sets that we had shown in this meta. However, you have to realize it's a short training study. So it's an eight week training study, which is a fairly short period of time. I would certainly, it's, volume is gonna follow what's called an inverted U or hormetic curve where you achieve benefits up to a certain point. You know, if I would make it get 100 sets per week, would that get better? No, probably not only would it not get better, you're gonna see a negative effect from an overtraining response. Right. And what this kind of tells me is that you can push the body for certain periods of time and then you're gonna start to see this negative effect. So the body is very good at adapting over short periods. So if you push yourself for a short period of time, you're not gonna overtrain. At what point people start to overtrain, it's going to be genetically uh, oriented as well as lifestyle oriented. But what this tells me is there might be a benefit, trying to wrap this up, to periodizing volume, where you do, uh, let's say, a block of very high volume training or higher volume training, whatever that is, and then periods of lower volume training. And you kind of build up, especially for competitive physique competitors, bodybuilders, where you're building up to, to a peaking, uh, to a competition where you're sure, peaking yeah. towards hypertrophy. Well, it's interesting too because the um, like all of the all of the stuff that I've always read in, was in terms of maximizing like for an event was around strength. So you tapered volume and strength peak. But this mm -hmm. is interesting because I haven't really seen much of this on, in, until your work has brought it up. What about volume? Because it's completely the opposite of the strength type uh, science that yep. I've seen. And I would say from a practical perspective, um, the way I feel about it is I don't think people, generally speaking, push yourself hard enough. I don't think they do enough. Now, the other side of that is then you get the crazy people who push really hard, but they never know when to back right, off. Right. So I think, you know, I've always felt like, um, as you mentioned, people's ability to tolerate this kind of stress is pretty variable. I've got people that can go just balls out for six weeks, eight weeks, and then pull back. And then I got people that can handle it literally for only like two weeks. So I think, um, I think it's pretty cool because what you're showing is, man, don't be afraid to push yourself. Like push, get some volume in, increase it intelligently, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Then when you start to see, okay, now maybe, you know, the size, the size is, gains are stopping, the strength gains are stopping, I'm, maybe I'm not sleeping as well, maybe, you know, you just, you pick up on all these signals that says, okay, maybe it's time to pull back. Mm -hmm. And I think in bodybuilding, that kind of stuff, it's so instinctive. Um, whereas in like strength training, there's very, you know, you do this for this amount of weeks, this for this, it's very planned, it's very methodical. And it's been proven to be very effective. But in bodybuilding, I think it's a little bit more complex Intuitive. You know, when people talk about well, what about somebody who's natural versus not natural, and I would tell you that I coach both. Some of the guys who are natural actually recover better, better than the guys who are not. Mm -hmm. And like that defies logic, but it's just because of the individual response. And, and to know? that point, it's such a great point. When we look at, at uh, studies like a resistance training study like I carried out, th we report the mean. So when I say there was 13% growth, that's pooling everyone together. If you actually look at the individual responses, which we have, we're actually gonna have another paper out of this and where we're looking at that, we're gonna actually investigate that. It's much more interesting in the sense that some people, we don't know, we didn't test their overtraining response, but there, some people are down here and some people are up here and then you get this middle. So that would indicate that we can only give, uh, research can only give basic guidelines as John really points out very eloquently, you need then to understand your own individual response or if you're coaching someone, their response, and then tailor this. I can't tell you that 45 sets with 30 sets or 20 sets would be optimum. Only the individual can know that. What I can say is, is that there is this, on a general level, this dose response. At some point, pushing volume has an effect and how that translates to the individual, that is where the true art of training comes in. That's where we bridge the gap between science and, and art and science and practice. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, for me, the takeaway is, like, listen, push yourself, methodically increase your volume, look for, look for signs uh, that you're progressing and keep going. But if, if those t kind of things dissipate and you're going the wrong way, then you pull back. But listen, don't be afraid to push yourself. As Brad mentioned, we did 40 plus sets. That's a lot, you know, for anybody. Right. But there were people who responded well. So you might be one of those people. And maybe you can handle it for a week, maybe two, maybe four. So play around with guys. Don't and, be afraid. And, right? and just in closing with that, remember too that that 40 sets was spread out, 45 was spread out over three. It's not 45 sets in a, in a session. So that was spread out. That was actually over yeah. three days, so three sessions. So they were doing 15 sets per session, not. 45 sets of legs in a training session. Yeah. That's an important thing. Again, that was, that's so cool that you did that because back in the old days, we would Never just said, it. okay, we're, going 45 to, sets. we're just going to do it all the way right. workout. So, right. um, all right, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you have some questions, by the way, comment below and we'll do our best to get them answered. And we will see you next time.